Hey boys and girls, it's day four of virtual first grade. So, um, first thing today is that we're going to take our Go Math test. So, hopefully, your parents got the email with the um, paper of your test. So, if not, then you might want to wait for this part and come back to it later. But this is the test and go math. So we're going to start with number one. Which shapes are curved? Choose all that apply. So a curved shape means it has really no flat sides. So think about that. All right. Number two, circle the number that makes the sentence true. A trapezoid has blank vertices. Remember, a vertices is a corner. All right, number three. How many triangles make a trapezoid? Use pattern blocks and draw to show the blocks you use. So you might think for a minute and you can even draw on your trapezoid that's on your paper right there. And think about you know, how many uh, triangles would be in there. I'll give you a hint. Come down here and here. A little trick to that. You might take a minute to look at that real carefully to see how many triangles will be in a trapezoid. And it says to draw a picture of that. So draw the trapezoid and then draw how you'd make the three shapes, three triangles. All right. Oop, I just gave it away. Sorry. Okay, next is next page. Number four, circle two shapes that can combine to make this new shape. So we did this on the review. So you think about drawing a line straight down from here. We have two shapes. So think about that. All right, number five, use triangles to make a re uh, yeah, a rectangle. Triangles to make a rectangle. Draw lines to show the parts. So there's steps to this, and if you go step by step, it's easier. So step one is to combine two triangles to make a square. Okay, so if you drew a line right here, you can see how it has two triangles. Then you use the two squares to make the rectangle. So you can draw how you have two squares now. And if you drew just what you did here, you'd have this and you'd have this. So then you'd have to count how many triangles made the rectangle. And you're going to write that in the box. Okay, so think about that. It's just like what yesterday what we did, but it was it's different shapes, okay, but it's how many triangles are in the rectangle, write that, and then which is larger, a quarter or a whole, we did that yesterday on the review, all right, so next, Use four pattern blocks to make the shape and draw to show the blocks you use. So looking at this funny little shape, you might think about starting here, drawing a line and see what you come up with. And that's going to give you two shapes, but you've got to have four, four shapes. Okay. 
So think about how you could make four shapes out of this if you drew some lines. So just take a minute and think about that. You can put the video on pause if you need to while you think about it. Okay, but I'll give you that one clue is to start by drawing a line right here. Right, and so that's going to give you two. So now you've got to make two more to make yourself have four. Okay. Next, draw a line to show the parts. Show one trapezoid and one triangle. So you have a big triangle here, but think about how you could draw a line to show a smaller triangle and a trapezoid. That's a big hint. Okay. There's more to this one, so. Does this shape show equal shares? I'm sorry, that was all of them. We're going on to the next one, number eight. That was all that was in the first one. All right, uh, shape show equal shares. So choose yes or no. Look at this. Are those equal, the same? Choose yes or no. What about this one? Same, yes or no. This one, same, yes or no? Well, school's over, boys and girls. It's three o'clock. Time to go home. All right. Number 10, draw lines to show fourths. So just like yesterday on the review, there's more than one way to do this, okay? So think about a way that you could use the square and show fourths. That's four equal parts, okay? So after you've done that, draw all that, then it says how many equal shares did you draw? Well, it said to draw fourths, so think about what the word fourths means. That's how many parts? That's easy. How many halves can you show in a square? Trick question, just like yesterday. Think about how many parts are in halves. If you have something in, cut in half, how many parts do you have? All right, and then the bottom one shows how can you solve this problem in a different way. So we just said there's more than one way to do this. So I'm going to draw another square, and then I'm going to show a different way to divide it into four equal parts or fourths. Okay, so think about that. Finish that. All right, going to the next part. to make a hundred okay so now we're gonna go on to super kids super kids for today all right so that word is hard and you can see the a r pirate sound in there hard
right, so now it's time for dictation. So just like yesterday, I said that you could get your journal and write in your journal if you have it. Um, some people didn't get their journal, so if you don't, you can just use paper, any kind of paper. All right, so starting with number one, we're going to go through the words, the four words, and then the sentence. Hard. It was hard to see where we were going in the dark. Hard. Hard. Number two. Card. Cass sent Tick a thank you card after the party. Card. Card. Dark. The room was dark. Dark. Park. Let's take a walk in the park. Park. Alright, so the words were hard, hard, dark, park. Here's your sentence. The kids laugh at the party. The kids laugh at the party. Alright, the sentence was... The kids laugh at the party. Laugh is a memory word. And there's the bell again. Can you tell I'm at school at 3 o'clock? All right, so do that one. The kids laugh at the party. So we got memory word, laugh, and party has the AR pirate sound. Okay, so that's all for dictation now. All right, so in your super kid book, let's go to page 73. Okay, get to page 73 in your super kid workbook. Alright, so the questions on this page have to do with the story Slumber Party. So let's look at number one. What kind of story did Tick tell? So think about the story. Was it a funny animal story? A story about real life? Or a scary monster story? You remember? What was it? It was a scary monster story, right? All right, number two. Why did Tick grab Lily? Was it she was helping Lily stand up? She was acting like a monster. She was mad at Lily. Hmm. Remember? All right, number three. Why didn't Lily like Tick's story? Was it it made her afraid? It was too sad, or it was long and boring. Hmm. Figure that out. Number four, what did Lily think was wiggling by her feet in the sleeping bag? I'm sorry, what did Lily think was wiggling by her sleeping bag? Was it Tick's feet, a monster, a kitten? And number five, what helped Lily feel better? Was it telling jokes, going inside to sleep, or looking at the stars? So you should have bubbled in the circle by all the right answers for that. And we've read the story two times now, so you should know all the answers to that. Okay? All right, now we're going to go to page 74. So you need to turn your page or look at your next page. I'm telling you, what in the world? There it is. Okay, so 
on page 74, there's a question in the top box. It says, how did they feel when they said it? All right, so the rest of these sentences are things that the characters in the slumber party story said. So look at sentence number one. Okay, so read that to yourself and I'll read it out loud. Number one is, Tick said, we'll sleep in my backyard. All right, so would that make her feel sad or happy? All right, this is Tick's party and that's what she wanted to do, so it made her feel happy. Number two, the monster said, who stole my pot of silver? Was the monster mad or sleepy? I don't think he was sleepy. Number three, Lily said, I don't like the dark. Was she bored or afraid? Number four, Tick said, why are you kicking my feet? Was she sad or puzzled? Hmm. And number five, Lily said, I like the way the stars sparkle. Does she feel happy or upset? All right, so that's pretty easy, thinking about feelings and how you feel about something, right? Okay, so today we're done with the Super Kid workbook, so you can put it away. But we're gonna look at a story uh, from our library called Extreme Sports. So extreme means really difficult, right? So let me get that pulled up. you could fly? Did you ever wish you could sail on wings in the blue, blue sky? Some people don't have to wish. They have wings that let them fly. These wings work a little like a kite. Do not flap these wings to fly. You stretch out your body and ride on the winds. What a thrill to fly along the cliffs and land and sea. So that looks pretty scary, doesn't it? these flyers take off with these wings? They jump from a cliff or helicopter. The flyer has equipment that lets him land safely. Flying with wings like these is an extreme sport. What makes an extreme sport? Extreme sports are thrilling and difficult and they are very risky as well. Surfing can be another extreme sport. In surfing, you paddle out to sea on a board. Then you scramble to your feet and ride the waves back to the beach. It's fun to surf on easy waves, but riding the big ones is extreme. So can you see the tiny person right there? So look how big that wave really is. It's the same with skateboards. Many kids ride skateboards and do simple tricks for fun, but some riders can make a skateboard flip and spin. They can do a big jump, land on their board, and take off to do the next trick. Skateboard tricks have names like kick flip, back flip, and stale fish grab, but some will make you gasp. But for an extreme skateboarder, the tricks are a blast.
Snowboarding is a bit like skateboarding. There are lots of snowboarders, but not many of them do extreme tricks like this man. Snowboarders blast over the top of the hill and they leap and twist and land with a swish. Surfing with the wind is a terrific sport. You zip over the waves like a speedy little sailboat. Boarders sail on the winds. They jump up, spin and flip, and splash back in the sea. With a kite, you can go faster yet. Boarders are tugged over the waves by a big kite. In a big wind, you can really fly along. In the end, the kite lets the border float back down. The kite can lift a border up, up, up until he's floating over the sea. Extreme bikers like bikes better than boards. They take these super bikes over hills and across ditches. These bikers can ride on just one wheel. They may speed up a steep ramp and jump a long way before they even land, and some stunts seem impossible. So, Colton, you know, he rides motorbikes like this, and look at this. You know what that's called? That's called a Superman, because he's flying out behind the bike. I don't think Colton can do these tricks. Maybe. Let's not forget about climbing. Extreme climbers like the steepest cliffs. A climber will hug a wall of rock, clinging to little cracks. A climber dusts his hands so they will not slip. He clips himself to a rope for safety. Little by little, the climber scrambles up the cliff. Extreme sports test how strong and fit you are. It takes years of training to do these sports and they never stop being risky. Many of us are glad to sit back and let others be extreme. After all, sports don't have to be extreme to be extremely fun. So I bet most all of you have done this, just like at the beach, get on the little surfboard and play in the waves. All right, boys and girls, that is all of school for today. That's all of Super Kids, and you should have taken your Go Math test and get your parents to take a picture of that and send it to me so that I can grade it. So tomorrow is going to be Friday, and it will be Spelling Test Day. So get ready, and let me show you one more time. These are spelling words for this week. So we've got far, star, car, card, hard. All of those have the AR pirate sound. Horn, born, corn, short, and sport. All of those have the OR or sound. And then we have a bonus word this week if you want to try it. Easter, because Easter is coming up really soon. So if you want to try Easter for your bonus words, you can. It starts with a capital E because it's the name of a holiday. It has a direction word in it, East, East, er. It's pretty much like it sounds, except this E-A. This is like the vowel, you know, the first vowel does the talking and the second one is shh. So it's just hearing E, Easter, Easter. So try that for your bonus word tomorrow. All right, boys and girls, it's been fun. One whole week of virtual school almost done. So study for your spelling test. See you tomorrow. Bye.